pump cards, and all three of these cards are we call them effective load pump cards. They all sit on sit on the zero load line, and they all show incomplete pump fillage, but they're incomplete pump fillage for three different problems. Okay, the the one on top we call a fluid pound card. Okay. The one in the middle is called a gas interference card, and the one in the bottom is called a blocked intake or flow into the pump is cho being choked off. Okay, and that's what the, the three cards represent. Now, one of the questions that I used to ask, and Paul Padilla, uh, Jim Lee loves to ask this question. He loves to say, if we have a pound fluid pound card, where's the pound? Where's the negative load when it pounds into the fluid? Okay, so just think about that. Where's the pound? You know, you don't see a pound there. Uh, so what's a, what's a fluid pound? Well, there's, there's not enough fluid flowing in from the reservoir to fill up the pump barrel on the stroke. That's the incomplete pump fillage. Um, we would call this well pumped off. The pump displacement is, is much more than the inflow. So we've got this much pump fillage this much empty pump, okay? Uh, the pump card's way up at FO max, so that means what? It means the pump intake pressure is low, all right? That's kind of what we talked about a minute ago. This is called a gas interference card. And this card right here is incompletely filled from here to here. This is wasted stroke because instead of the pump being filled with liquid, it's filled with gas under pressure, and this gas had to be pressurized and compressed until right there at point D, the pressure inside the pump was high enough to exceed the discharge pressure and knock the trailing bell off the seat. In fact, even here with this pump card with fluid pound, the plunger has to move down, moves down until finally at point D, the gas, even though it's not much gas, the gas inside the pump has been pressurized up to a point where it can exceed the discharge pressure and, and knock the trailing, the trailing valve ball off so the fluid inside the pump can be displaced in the, in the tubing on the downstroke. So both of these had gas compression. Even though there's not much gas here, low pressure gas, this had more compression because the pressure was higher in the gas. Now here's, here's the one that's kind of interesting, that one that we just have seen. We've seen these probably all the time. We just didn't really understand as well how easy they were to diagnose. This is a blocked intake. And the FO from the fluid level line says, the fluid level is pretty high on the outside of the pump. Okay, see this line right here? That means it's high fluid level. And the pump card should just go up to that line right there and stop. But inside the pump barrel, there's no fluid entry because the intake is blocked. So the pressure inside the pump barrel is zero on the inside, on the outside is high. And so the, fl the, the differential pressure acting across the trailing valve is as if there's no intake pressure because the pressure inside the barrel is very low because the intake's blocked. So that means the pump card load goes up to FO max. Okay, so it goes up to FO max because, because there's no fluid inside the pump. That means in this well, where did this fluid come from? And this is obvious, there should be no fluid here because the intake's blocked. Well, maybe a little bit of fluid leaked in. Maybe this fluid right here is from, from, from slippage, from slippage between the plunger and the barrel. Maybe that's where that fluid's coming from. But notice here, since there's no compression of the gas inside the pump, when the plunger hits the fluid, it actually has a negative load. It has a compression load right there. Okay, so there's really a pound on, a collision, let's say, on the plunger when there's no, when the intake to the pump is choked off. Now, what we're gonna talk about here is this from C to D, this compression curve from C to D. And at C, on the upstroke, we filled the pump up with fluid from the well. So right there at point C, the trailing valve ball goes on the seat because we brought in fluid from the well bore into the pump. The pump's filled with oil, water, and gas. And then we start to unstretch the rods, and the rods start to compress, compress the fluid inside the pump from C to D. And at point D, the pressure inside the pump is high enough that it exceeds the discharge pressure and at point D, the trailing valve ball opens and then the plunger can move through the, through the pump barrel on the downstroke. And so what we're really thinking about here on, those, on these three pump cards is what's happening from C to D. It's 
it's, it's a gas compression, you know, gas compression part of the pump card. And, you know, soak rod pumps are great gas compressors, but they, when they stop to compress the gas, they buckle rods and wear a hole in your tubing. So they can compress the gas, but you don't like the result of compressing the gas because usually it means additional rod on tubing wear. So let's look, at, let's look at these three cards here and just think about them. A uh, fluid pound card, the fluid load is up at FO max from the pump card. The fluid load from the fluid level is up at FO max, which means we have low pump intake pressure. From a gas interference card, the fluid load from the pump card is at FO from the fluid level, so the fluid load from the pump card matches up with, typically, with the fluid load from the fluid level, whereas the FO max is much higher than the fluid load from the pump card. And the fluid level is much less than FO from FO max. So both of these, the fluid, FO from the fluid level and FO from the pump card are much less than FO max when you have gas interference because there's high pressure gas at the pump intake. Whereas as a choked intake, when the intake is blocked, the fluid load from the pump card is up at FO max. And FO from the fluid level is, is much less than FO max, and that's where the pump card fluid load should be, but it's up here high because the pressure inside the pump barrel is zero or very low. Okay, so the pressure inside the pump barrel here is, is low or zero because there's no, no pressure entry or fluid entry into the pump because it's blocked off or choked off. Now, this is just going to talk about some diagnostic pump card shapes and try to explain again.